Right, welcome back to um, the C3 uh, videos that we're currently doing. Um, in the last video we talked about uh, exponentials and the last video I put up um, in, in terms of doing this I did uh, the exponential past paper crush and I did two of them. Um, they were quite difficult um, but hopefully we got through them okay. Right, so um, again we're going back to this C3 book if you're in my class, but if you're not then we'll just be going through the next part of C3. Um, just let me double check what that is. Sorry, I know I put this on top. Yeah, so it's differentiation. Now in this video, um, I'll just be talking about uh, three rules, the product rule, the chain rule and something that's known as the bracket rule. Um, I think, yeah, that's all three of them. Yeah, the quotient, uh, sorry, yeah, and the quotient rule, yeah, I, was, I sometimes get the names mixed up, but, um, moves, you know what I mean. Anyway, so, we're going to go through them four rules, um, fairly simple kind of stuff, um, and then I don't think there's any past paper questions, now, I'll do a few questions um, in each rule to get you used to it, so that's quite a big chunk of it, and then in the next video, I'm going to be doing differentiating trigonometric, trigonometric functions. So it's a differentiating sine, cos and tan. And I'll be explaining what cos, cos x and sine x etc is. Um, and how we can apply the products rules and what we've learned in this video to the next video. So I will be hinting at stuff um, about differentiating trigonometric functions. Assuming that I'll put them up all at the same time. Otherwise you just might need to have a quick flip through. So we are about, I would say, uh, more than halfway through C3 now. Um, so, you know, plenty of, plenty of time still to go. Okay, so um, I'm going to start off by reminding you. Um, just let me get to the right page. Reminding you what differentiation is. Now... We did talk about it in terms of exponential, but I'm just going to go back to basics, really, um, just to get you, I know some of you might be already familiar with differentiation, but what we did is we had a function, say, y equals 3x squared, and differential of that would be 3 times 2 is 6, reduce the power by 1, so it would be 6x. So that's what differentiation is. So you times in the power um, by the coefficient of the x, and then reducing the power by 1. So... I'm assuming you should know, that was just a bit of recap in case um, you forgot because we haven't done differentiation for a while. Um, the differentiation of the exponential was slightly different, we didn't reduce the power. So just remember, that is what you do. Okay, so um, in the difference between C3 differentiation and C2 and C1 differentiation is, it's a little bit more complex. So we have to use different rules. Um, give you an example here, I'm just using the examples out of this book because I want to make sure it works. Um, there'll be something like this. So y equals 6x plus 2 to the power 10. Now you couldn't do differential that, you could expand it and put it in 10 brackets but A that's going to take a very long time, B you don't have that kind of length of time in the exam kind of same point there really but essentially you couldn't do that unless you expanded it and then simplified it and that's all going to take a lot of time but you could do it that way but mathematicians are quite lazy so what they tend to do is say how could we make that easier to do how could we do less work basically because we're all like us at the end of the day the human they can't be bothered so um they came up with four rules not three uh, so we're going to use the chain rule first and this is how it's said in your um, formula sheets and booklets but I'm going to explain a different way um, of thinking about it because the way they put it is dy dx equals um, dy over now this is the differential of whatever you want to call it I'm going to call it t over times dt over dx so the two dt's there cancel out, so essentially you can see y over dx. Um, but, that you may be looking at that going, 
what does that mean? I know what dy by dx is, but what is dy by dt or dt by dx? Well, the way I like to explain it, so if we go back to our original thing of y equals 6x plus 2 to the power 10, what does that mean? Okay, so, um, so what we need to do is, we can't just go straight into this, we need to know what dy by dt is first. So dy by dt is, um, oops, sorry, oh, is the bit in, yeah, so, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> I totally forgot. Right, okay, so what is dt? What is t? Okay, so what we're going to assume t is, is everything inside the bracket. So you see this y equals bracket 6x plus 2 to the power 10. This isn't the best example, and I'll explain why in a minute. That's why I should have created my own. So this is essentially the same. If we assume everything, the whole bracket is equal to t. So t equals this, t is equal to bracket 6x plus 2. So y equals t to the power 10. And if we remember, cast our minds back to what I was saying at the start of the video of differentiation, this is the same as y equals 1 times t to the power 10. And then we can simply dy by dt, that's where the dt part comes in, because we're differentiating by t, that becomes 10t to the power 9. And then what we simply do then is put our brackets back in, so that is 10 brackets 6x plus 2 to the power 9, and that is the same as dy by dt. So basically, what we did there, and that's dy by dt, what, essentially what we did there, I'll sort of explain it a bit better for you, is we made all the brackets, so we could have had double brackets there, we made all the brackets equal to t. Um, so 6x plus 2, if that's, that's in brackets, that could, if that was um, 6x brackets 6x plus 2, we'd have 6x times t to the power 10. So we wouldn't, it's not the whole, that's why it's not the best example, because it just looks like we put the whole equation equal to t, and then put the power at the top, and we haven't, we haven't done that. All we've done, everything inside the brackets, we said, oh, well, that's t, just so we can differentiate that. I mean, we could have, we could have left out the t, and we could have just done 10 brackets 6x plus 2 to the power 9, which is what we ended up with, but it's a bit more easier to think of it, putting the t there, because then you're not getting mixed up with going, oh, do I need to expand this, do I need to do something, because we can't expand the t, it's just a letter but it's meant to be representing 6x plus 2. So that's dy by dt. So that's our first part, so we'll tick that off. And now we need to find dt by dx. And now, the best way of thinking about this is we're just focusing on the bit of inside the brackets. We're not focused on the outside, so if we had 6x on the outside and 2 on the inside, we'd only be differentiating the 2. So all we're focused on is the 6x plus 2 in the brackets, okay? We're not changing it to t this time, we're just simply doing the differential of 6x plus 2. And you should know from your C1 studies, you, if you differentiate just a integer, just one, just a number, becomes 0 because it's essentially 2x to the power 0, and 0 times 2 is um, 0, so it doesn't matter what x is because it's going to be 0. Um, and then six, the differential is 6x, 6 to the power 1, 6 times 1 is 1, remove the power of x, so 6 to the power, six, x to the power 0, and that's just anything to the power 0 is 1, so 6 times 1, so it's 6. So that is just 6. And then we times these two together, so if we put it back into dy by dx, we get 10 times, 10 times the bracket. 10 times 6x plus 2, and put that in square brackets, times 6, and then what we do here, if you just do 10 times 6, which is 60, and then we leave the same before. So don't forget the power on the brackets, so it ends up being 60 times 6x plus 2 to the power 9. So that is our answer for that equation. And how much simpler was that than quicker, it spent us a few minutes that, just doing that, whereas if we'd expanded it ten times that would have taken us a long time and we would, need, we would have needed a few brains to get on that one. But 
Doing it that way is a lot simpler. Now, that is um, the main method it generally asks you to do. Um, these other few aren't as common. That's um, So the best way of thinking about that, remember, is um, when you've got a bracket, so when you've got dx by dy by dx um, equals dy over dt times dt over dx. The first part, the dy over dx, so, uh, sorry, dy over dt, just saying make the bracket equal to t, differentiate that and then put the t, whatever t was, back in there. And then the dt by dx is just saying what was t, so t was inside the brackets, and just differentiate that by x. Okay, so that's what that means. Um, now what they generally, I will do another example of this. Now what they generally will do in exam questions, and the only reason I haven't done it in this question is because we've not learnt the other rules, is they'll generally try and mix the rules up. So you'll have to use one rule when you're differentiating with another rule, um, and that'll become more apparent as we go through the rules of what to do. But just for the moment, you will only... It doesn't. People sometimes say, um, how do I know which rule to use? Well, obviously if it tells you in the question, you know which rule to use. But you, there's no limit on what rule you can do. Generally it'll be mixing two up. But, and I don't say using half of one. I mean using a full one, and I'll explain that, it'll become more apparent. You don't need to worry about it if you don't get that. So this other one is using the chain rule. This is really told us that. So it's the y equals the square root of 2 plus x squared. Now you should know straight away anything to the power anything square rooted is to the power of a half so we can rewrite that, that as y equals brackets 2 plus x squared to the power half and we've got the same sort of problem we had before so dy by dt we'll do that first dy by dt so remember we changed the whole the inside of the bracket to t so it's y equals t to the power a half and then we differentiate that so 1 times a half is a half and then a half take away um, 1 is negative half and you could write that as y equals a half over t to the power a half. Do you get where I'm going with that, the most cyclical uh, C1 stuff? So we could we put that t back in there so it's a half over the square root because that is the power of a half remember of um, of t. So that's the square root of 2 um, plus x squared. So that's dy by d, dt. And then we need dt by dx. Uh, this it's t, by the way, sometimes referred to as u, the, the same thing. I just prefer t because u is a bit funny with me. Um, and then we did the inside of the brackets. So if you just focus on the inside by d for dt by dx, that's the second part of the equation. The differential of 2 is 0, so we don't need to ignore we need to can ignore that. And the differential of x squared is 2x. So then we're left with um, a half. So d so we times the dt y by dt, which is a half over root square root of 2 plus x squared. So you can just write that as half times 2 plus x squared to the power of negative half, but it doesn't matter, it's the same thing, it just makes more sense to do it this way, and it'll become apparent in a minute. So, a half over the square root of 2 plus x squared, and we times in that by 2x, so the 2x times by the top of this power, so 2x times a half is x, and then that leaves us with x over root 2 plus x squared. And that is your final answer. Obviously, you can rewrite that in a number of ways, um, but as long as it, you could make it equal to that, that is the way that you do it. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, so you remember, so the step of the chain rule, there's that, do you, do you see why the top part of it looks confusing? So when you've got what the chain rule actually is, it's not that helpful, you don't know, that doesn't tell you anything. I think doing it my way, thinking of it my way is a lot more... Uh, intuitive. It allows you to think the process through a little bit more um, and sort of split it up and you don't need to focus on just copying out the uh, table or uh, sorry, the equation even. So that's the chain rule. Okay, so hopefully you get that. Um, now I will, I'm not going to do questions just on the chain rule anymore. Um, I'm going to try and get through 
the rest of the rules um, so we can carry on. Okay, so that was a chain rule. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna rub all this out. Um, and I'm just gonna put that is the I just write rub out the chain rule and then I'll just rewrite it again at the end at the side here. So dy by dx member equals uh, dy by dx equals dy over dt times dt over dy. So that's the chain rule. So you can always refer to that, but I'm going to write it small because I don't want you focusing on that for this one. Okay, so the next rule is something called the bracket rule. Now, again, if you're in um, my class, this is on, you're just following, this is the next rule in the book. So the bracket rule, what is the black bracket rule? Well, um, I'm just going to write it out. So it's n, and I'll explain what all these mean in a minute, times, sorry, n times f to the fx of n to the minus 1 times f dash x, that's the derivative of x, of the function x. So that is the bracket rule there. And I just remembered that off the top of my head. I, I'm quite good at remembering rules, but I think that's given to you. I'm not sure, no, I don't, th I don't think it's given to you in your exam sheet, so it's just a good idea to remember that. Now, for this one, I don't have any other simplified methods of working this out. I just simply follow the rule. However, I have got a few tips for you um, to work out because I know that f x that n take 1 is slightly different to the f dash x because the f dash x is derivative and I need to explain what you do with that. Okay, so where does this n come from? So let's give ourselves a function. Okay, so f x equals um, 3x plus 2 to the power 5. Okay, and it's the bracket rule, by the way, is a differential way of doing the differentiation. So the bracket rule is the same as saying dy by dx equals that, the bracket rule there. It's the same thing. I've just, instead of putting dy dx equals, I just put bracket rule equals. It's the same thing. Um, just the bracket rule is one way of differentiating it. So this is what we've got here. Okay, so 3x plus 2 uh, to the power 5. Now, to the power of 5, that is n. Okay? So, by following this simple rule here, it's 5 times, now, f x, the n minus 1, that is f x, so that's the 3x plus 2, to the power of 5 take 1, because n is 5. So that is um, 3x plus 2 to the power 4, because 5 take 1 is 4. And then we can put that in actually square brackets, we can split this up, or you can continue doing it in this kind of method, but I think this is easier, times the um, derivative of the function. Now, we've not got f, x, if we had f, the, the der derivative, so f dash, x to the power n, we'd simply just differentiate that part of the equation, and we'd need the chain, chain rule for that. But, as there's no power, it's just f dash x, all we do is differentiate the um, 3x plus 2. So that obviously just gets us 3. So that's 5 times 3 is 15, and that's 15 times 3x plus 2 to the power 4. So that's what that equals. Now you can see that is similar to the chain rule, because they all meant to, at the end of the day, the rule meant to be a similar thing. The only two that are slightly different are the last two. The first two, the bracket rule and chain rule, the way you do it, I mean, the, the, the first part is slightly different. But essentially, the same, the bottom part, so what you actually work out at the end is very similar. It's just a different way of getting to it. And we get the same answer, so I can prove this to you now. Okay, so that's the bracket rule. If this doesn't come out to be the right answer, I'm not looking right again. Okay, so that's the bracket rule. We've got 15 plus, so 15 times 3x plus 2 to the power of 4. So let's try doing that with a chain rule. Let's say I'm going to prove to you that these two rules work in tandem, so they get you the same answer. They should do, anyway. If this comes out wrong, it's my fault. So remember what we said about the chain rule, so I'm linking back to the chain rule. So dy by dt, so what we said is we made the equation inside the brackets equal to t. So this would be 15t to the power 4. And then we times 15 by the power 4. So if you did that when you... I should be able to do that in my head, but... 
being quite lazy. That gets us 60, so it's 60t to the power 3, and I'm just going to put this as 60 times 3x plus 2, oh sorry, oh, that's wrong, <laughs> sorry, it's 15, oh what, oh, yeah, sorry, no, I was going off the occult, forget, forget I said that, the method was right, that was using the wrong numbers, that's why I got, I thought that's not right, um, and I spotted that because the power there up here is 5 and I, I put it as 4 because that was the answer. So what we were, I actually was doing there was differentiating the differential of the chain of the bracket rule. So forget, so our original equation remember was 3 brackets 3x plus 2 to the power of 5. Now I don't want anyone complaining that I don't know what I'm doing. I just got confused because um, I was using the, the, sec the answer to the second part. So um, that's obviously one of the things to avoid. So, what we said with the chain rule, so dy by dt, that's the first part, we said make the inside the bracket, so 3x plus 2 equal to t, and then you times that by, um, yeah, so that would be t, so it would be t to the power 5, and then it would be 5t to the power 4, so that's the same as saying same 5 times 3x plus 2 to the power 4, which is exactly what we got here, and then we said we differentiate the inside the bracket, which is going to be 3, so it's the same, it's exactly the same. These two are exactly the same, okay? So, if you're not sure you've got it right, if you want to double check by doing the bracket rule and the chain rule, um, because yeah, I'm assuming you can do these in tandem, um, depending obviously what equation you have, you should get exactly the same answer because you are, you're not doing anything different, you're differentiating, it's just a different way of differentiating. So, that would get us exactly the same answer, 15, 3x plus 2 to the power of 4. So we've got exactly the same answers. Hopefully that's proved to you the bracket rule works as well. So same thing I'm going to do with the bracket rule that I did with the chain rule. So we're going to build up our rules on the board. So they're always there if you need them, if you need to refer to them. And we said the bracket rule, so n times fx to the n take 1 times f dash of x. And that is the bracket rule. Now, the next two are slightly different. Um, I mean, they are they're quite. The last two are quite similar, just like the first two are quite similar. Um, okay, so what what is we talking about here? We're talking about the products rule. Now, in your um, books, you'll see the products rule written as um, v times du by dx plus u times d by dx and you go what's our what's our u's and what's our v's what does that mean when our t was that's just the inside bracket what is a u what is a v well generally you only use the product rule or the quotient rule when you have function two functions of x that's what v is v is one function of x and u is another function it doesn't matter, okay, generally the V, well I think it does, well, basically the V is always the first part, and that's how I assume it, and the second part is, um, so the U is a second function of X, so it would be 3X plus, 3X squared plus 2X, and the 3X would be V, and, sorry, 3X squared would be V, and the 2X would be U. The way I think of this, if you're a phys if you do physics, is um, that V is the final so sort of your final velocity, so your final velocity, and if you wanted to change, work out your change in velocity, you do your final velocity take your initial, and that's v take u. So you can just apply this to the product rule. However, if you're just doing maths, then you don't need to worry about that. Just ignore what I said there. But just remember, v always comes first, and u comes second. Even that's confusing. Okay, so uh, what equation could we have for the product rule? Now, again, I'm not going to make one up. I'll just use one out the book. Um, so let me just choose one now. Da, 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 da. Ooh, this, is, this is quite hard one actually. Um, Alright, okay, so this is bringing your knowledge back to exponentials. So we are going out a bit. So y equals 4x squared times the ln of x. 
or what I call the inner vex. I'm saying it's the L inner vex, but I'm, I always put I always find myself putting the I, even though you shouldn't. And then we we've got what we've got here. So this y equals four x squared times the inner vex. Remember, I said the v was the first x uh, value. So that v, so v equals four x squared. I mean, for this particular, for this particular rule, it doesn't matter. Because it doesn't matter um, what v and u is, but v is generally always the first one, and u is the second one. And that's because we're adding them together, so we're going to get the same answer anyway. Um, but it's just for the quotient rule, you take them away, so you need to know which one to go first. But um, don't worry about that yet. Just remember, v is a first coefficient, and um, u is a second. So v equals uh, 4x squared, and u, therefore, equals the ln of x. Um, now, what I'm going to do now is, I'm, this is what I generally do when I get an equation... Let's go do functions of x. Obviously, we could use the other the other rules as well, but mm, I would anticipate you'd most likely to get messed up on that one. And what I do for the positive rule, because we're asked for the v, the u, and the differential of both, what I do is find out what v is, I wrote what u is, and what, well, what v is, and underneath, I'm going to do the differential. Before I even get into the product rule, um, I'll do dv by dx under v, so that'd be 8x, and I'll do du by dx, so, what is the differential of the ln of x? Now, if you don't know what that is, um, I don't think I mentioned it in my explanation, so I should have done. I was trying to hurry up and finish that one. But it's 1 over x. Okay? Um, and if it's the inner of 3x, it's 1 over 3x. So that's, I guess, I mean, you can always go into exam solutions if you want to focus more on the ln of x and differential for that. But... Um, I think that's you won't get anything more strenuous than ln of 3x. Um, okay, so what what we're doing there? Okay, so that's our, our values, in. and then we've got everything we need. So we've got each part of the product rule, and then we simply just do the division now. So the addition. So that's v. We've got 4x squared. Brackets, and then we correspond it with this one, 1 over x, plus. Um, ln of x times 8x. Okay, and then we add them to get we multiply them out before we add them together. So 4x squared times 1 over x is 4x squared over x. And then we're adding that to 8x times the ln of x, which is simply just as it's said. And then we can cancel the 4x squared over x just to 4x. Because we take, remember when you divide back to C1 in, it's easy to take away the powers. So it's 4x plus 8x times the ln of x. So that's your, your dy by dx. You don't need to cancel that down, I don't think. That is the product rule there. Hopefully that's been quite self-explanatory. Um, I don't think we need to do any more exam questions. Because it's not as you don't need to go through a load of steps, it's simply just times in the efficiency of the v and the x. Okay. So what I said um, before is I, I talked about the um, quotient rule and the product rule being quite similar. So I'm going to write out the quotient rule and I'm going to give you a question to do on it. Okay. And um, see if you can do it just by... Because there's no new knowledge here. This last little bit of the product rule, the, what, what the product rule means, that's the last little bit of extra information. The rest of it, you, for the quotient rule, you just follow the same principles as the product rule, but obviously a different equation. And the reason we have the different rules, uh, the quotient rule, is um, it sort of looks like a divide because it's a fraction. Um, sorry, one sec. That's not very come out very well. But you've got it in your books anyway. So basically it's V times the differential of uh, dy over du, or dt or whatever. Take u of... Sorry. 
Yeah, so V times the D differential of dy over du, take away du, times the differential of dv over dx over v squared. So the same principle of finding v in the differential of v. I'm going to give you a question now. A, again, if you're in my class, you've probably already done these. Um, so y equals the Sorry, there's one thing I need to explain actually before you go ahead. Y of L line of X over 1 plus X squared. Now this is question 5, uh, sorry, 5, exercise 5.4 1D for people in my class. Um, now what I must stress is um, it's U over V. So the top half of the fraction is U, the bottom half of the fraction is equal to V. Okay, so I'll just give you a few seconds to pause the video now. Um, so you can have a quick little go at that one. Right, welcome back if you've uh, had a go. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to explain how to do this. Hopefully, having done the product rule, you'll know what d, dy by du and dv by dx is. Um, okay, so first thing I did, if you cast your minds back to a few minutes ago, is... Um, I, first of all, by, before I even went into the equation, I gave myself, well, what is V? What is U? What is the differential of V? What is the differential of U? Uh, Etc. So, V is equal to the bottom. So, V equals 1 plus X squared. And U equals the ln of X, or the inverse of the natural, the inverse of the exponential. Okay? So, and one thing to remember the differential of the exponential is not the inverse of the exponential. That's something you need to be careful of. So dv by dx and du by dx. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so what is the differential of 1 plus x squared? Well, 1 goes to 0, x squared goes to 2x. What's the differential of L of x, I just said that before, that's 1 over x. That's why I picked this question. Um, okay, so there are four key things we need to know. Alright? So you always need to know what do, what, whenever you start a question, this is not just generally, this is just generally for maths or any subject, or for generally maths and physics, the ones I do. Um, you need to ask yourself, what do we need to know? What is this question requiring me to know? Um, I know again, if you're redoing NEAS or if you're an AS student, should be quite good if you're doing this. Um, when you're doing the SUVAC equations in physics, you need to go, right, okay, I've got the speed, I've got the distance, I've got the acceleration, the time, whatever you may, may need. That's what we've done here. That's what we've got and what we need to use. So, V, 1 plus x squared, and the word times in that, remember, double brackets, D, uh, D U by DX, that's 1 over X, take away, so u times, so u is the ln of x, times the differential of the dv by dx, um, so that's 2x, over v squared, now v is 1 plus x squared, so remember, double brackets, or if you just prefer to cheat and just do, just write it as 1 plus x squared, you can do, but might be a bit of a problem with that. Okay, which I'll explain in a minute. So, that's the coefficient rule. Now we need, just need to simplify this. So, 1 plus x squared times 1 over x. So, 1 times 1 over x is 1 over x. Plus, 1 over x squared is x squared over x, which just gets us x. So, I did sort of cheat a little bit there, but I'm just trying to simplify it down for you. Take away 2x times the ln, oh can I put it there again, the ln of x, and that is all over 1 plus x squared, and if we can expand the, the 1 plus x squared, that would be great, so the, it goes to x squared plus 2x plus 1, and you can leave it as that, I think 
You might be able to simplify that, but I'm not going to try and confuse myself. As long as you've got to that stage, I think that'll be enough for most of the marks. Okay, so that is the quotient rule. They're the four rules there. Um, now, what I'm going to do now um, is just going to try and put all these rules into one nice um, question. Well, not fit them all, but try and mix the rules is what I was talking about before. Because generally, you won't say, oh, I'm going to be nice today in your exam. I'm not going to tell you what rule to use. But I'm going to tell you um, the equation as well. Because they tell you the equation anyway, but to tell both is quite quite unique. That's why them questions we've been doing have been exercises. That's because they've said in the question of each of them, it's the quotient, it's the different product, or it's the chain or the bracket rule. Now you need to be able to confidently use them in intertwine and not mix them, not get half of one equation with half of another equation. Um, like the two you could mix up with the product and the quotient rule and the chain and the bracket rule, make sure you don't. Even though they're, they're very similar, um, the first two and the last two are very similar as well, it's key not to mix them up. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now for you is um, just going to choose one of the equations. Sorry. So I'm just trying to, if I remember rightly, mm. sorry, I am going to do that. Mm. I, I don't think any of the questions in here actually ask you to use both of them intertwine. Well, I guess the, we are on the subject of exam questions, and what they might ask you is they will always say, they will always have something in the, one of the questions that I'll refer to, you see one, you see two, for example. So, one of the questions you might ask you is, find the equation, the equation of a tangent to a curve, of a tangent to the curve sorry about this so find the equation of a tangent to the curve which has the equation y equals 3x take 1 quarter at the point where x equals 1 ok so this I'm going to this question requires two parts of two parts of your C1 knowledge. Okay, um, so obviously it's an equation of a tangent. Well, actually, there's three. You need to know what an equation of a tangent looks like before we even start this. Um, sorry, the camera's about to stand, but I'll keep coming speaking. You need to know what the equation of a tangent looks like. And now, if you remember, um, a tangent or even a normal. They're the two ones, and it gives a bit of a clue just saying that. Um, they have equations of, in the line y equals mx plus c. Now, that is, as you know, the equation for a straight line. And that's quite coincidental because the tangents and normals are the same line. Now, I'm just going to explain um, the equation of a tangent to a curve is the same as the gradient of the curve. However, a normal is 1 over the tangent, so it's a reciprocal of that, um, of that gradient of the curve. But because this is a tangent, the equation of a tangent, not a normal, um, we are perfectly okay. So we don't need to do anything with the gradient, we just need to find the gradient. Now the first thing that someone might do is think, okay, so the, dif the first differential gives us the gradient at x equals 1. But we're going to need another part of... Um, because if you remember the equation for a straight line, it's y take y1 equals m brackets x take x1 off. Or, I, can't, I think, yeah, x1 take x, I can't, it's, it's in your formula book anyway, sorry about that. So, but we don't, it, you notice, we don't have two points, so that's going to be quite difficult. So, when we say, 
imagine we've got the gradient, okay? We've worked out the gradient. So we've got m is equal to something, we've got x is equal to something, we want y equals mx plus c. So we know what m and x is, but we don't know what, because we want c, and we don't know what y is. We don't know what c is, and we don't know what y is. So we're going to need to find y to be able to get c, and we get y by putting x's into that equation. So let's just do that now before we get start the gradient, just so we've got all the bits of information we need. So y equals 3 take 1, which... Um, 3 times 1 is 3, take away 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, so y equals 16. And we need to find our gradient, okay? So when we've got them, we can just put y equals mx, and do the mx in our heads, and then we could add or take c if it's needed. So, the differential of this, so how do we do that? Well, I'm going to let you have a go. So let's pause the video. That first bit... Um, probably was the trickiest bit. I'm just going to let let you have a go at the bit, have a go at the question now, and um, then you can we'll go through it together in a minute. Okay, so hopefully you've come back. <laughs> hopefully, um, if you obviously wouldn't be watching this video. Now, the first thing we do is differential, and I've left I left the rules on the side. Obviously, they're in the book. We can choose the first two. That's our our option. Um, now, what I prefer to do, because it's um, already sort of in the form of the bracket rule, I'd do the bracket rule, I'd pick, I'd prefer the bracket rule over the um, chain rule if I could, purely because it's easier and we don't have to, we, we could just follow the rules of the bracket rule. Okay, so it's, remember, 4 times 3x take 1 and reduce the power, so 3x take 1 to the power of 3, and close square brackets that, times the differential of the inside brackets. So that's 3x take 1, that just gets us to 3. So then we do 4 times 3, so that's 12 brackets, 3x take 1 to the power 3. And that gets us our um, equation for the differential. However, that doesn't give us anything we didn't already know. Now we know at that point, if we put x is equal to something, we're going to get the gradient of it. So Put 12 times 3, open brackets, because we know x is 1. Take 1 to the power of 3. And the answer of this will give us our gradient. So, what we need to do is do it inside the brackets first, as Bob Master. 3 times 1, 3, take 1, 2. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 8 times 12, uh, 24, take 1, 4, 4, that's 120. Sorry, that's how I do it. Should be 120. Sorry, I'm working off the top of my head. I just need to actually check, check that, I'm right? So 3 times 1 is 2, 2 to the power 8, so 8 times 12. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, it's 8. Oh, I've got to say, I've got 10. Can't believe I made that mistake. It's 96. Trying to be mathematically intelligent to work. Um, yeah, so there's the inner gradient of 96. So we know y equals 96x plus c. Okay, because y equals mx plus c. And we've got our values up here. You see how we've needed them values now? So we said if we put our known values in, so 16 equals 96 times whatever x is 1 plus c. So 16 equals 96 plus c. Now obviously c is going to be negative. So if we retract, subtract um, 96 from both sides, that gets us minus 80 equals positive c. So therefore, if we put this back into the original equation, we don't need to... So y equals 96x, take 80. And that is our equation for our equation of tangent to the curve. And I'd say that would be worth about 6, 6 marks. So you should have spent um, about 6 minutes. I was in for about 6 or 7 minutes on that question. There's a minute per mark. Um, if you... I'm oh, sorry. Just... So, the only reason I do that, I mean, I know it is, you know, an hour, an hour and a half or two hours for the exam, and you get 60 marks, so it's just easier, just to give yourself that 20 minutes at the end, or, oh, you know, make sure you get about 10 minutes at the end at least to check over your work, so working at about, you know, 1.2 minutes a mark or something, it's probably acceptable, that's why, the rate I'd try and go at. Okay, so that's... Um, I know we didn't mix all of the um, equations in there 
in that last question. I try to try to do that and explain. Hopefully that equation is something you can see why that that question is more like something you would get in the actual exam because it's more of a maths based question. It's not just saying differentiate this because you generally wouldn't get that. They're not gonna they're gonna part of the marks is gonna be for you realizing you have to do that because in you have to relate to everyday life and it's not going to say differentiate this. You're going to need to know to do that to be able to get another answer. So that's more like something you'd see. Okay, so hopefully that's been helpful. And uh, well done for making it to the end. That's quite a long video. Um, and we'll see you in the next video.